Howdy everyone, Posha here with an Age of Magic video and in today's video we will be versing the Goo Squad with the Firestorm Squad or a variant of it. In this variant we are replacing the Succubus with Bliss. The reason for this is because of his second ability, Enchanting Flute. Cast True Strike on allies. Next time these allies will deal damage twice but it cannot be critical. True Strike dissolves after triggering. Now this is great for this team because when versing the Goos, their greatest aspect of the team is their Canopic Jars. When they have Canopic Jars on the team or on the field, they get a wider range of benefits. For example, if we look at Omphus, if there is a Canopic Jar on the field and he is awakened within his leadership ability, he will offer a 60% damage reduction to the team and an extra 10% on top of that if there are more than one Canopic Jar. So it can be quite painful. Canopic Jars have and almost invincibility until you get rid of their stacks and there is a lot of coming back to life. The way to deal with this is to essentially either eliminate the Canopic Jars or you can try and detonate the whole team and get rid of them in one go, which is what this team does. There is so much damage coming out, the Canopic Jars do not survive and they are eliminated quite quickly. So we'll go over it. This is a great PVP team. You could use it in tournament as well. However, if you are gonna be using it in tournament, be aware it's quite heal kit intensive. You do take a lot of damage on this team. So just keep in mind that if you are planning to use it in tournament, but if you wanna get some bonus points, you wanna use it once, by all means, go for it. And there's nothing wrong with using Gatekeeper. Everyone loves a bit of Gatekeeper. So let's get into it. We will be running this at a one-time speed because this battle is over quite quickly. Now, this is the version of the fight where everything is awakened on both teams. Everything is maxed out. We start off with Rage of the Abyss from the Gatekeeper. It adds some stacks to the enemy team. We are going to get struck back by the Siri. It's fine. It does not matter. Out comes the Enchanting Flute. So we are going to get double damage now. It also applies more stacks, I believe, as well. I could be wrong, though. I've tested it. I don't know if I notice a difference, but who knows with Age of Magic. Out comes the barrier. There is not much of it because of the Tiona. We are going to go ahead and use Chain Reaction. That is going to boost the stacks on the enemy. We've got plenty now. Wonderful. Now we just need to detonate it. When Flame's turn comes around, we are going to use Meteor Strike. And there's going to be a lot going on. Bang, bang, bang. Beautiful. We're just going to attack the person with the highest stacks, which is Omphus. And eliminate him. The, snack, the stacks keep detonating. Now we will go for the Siri, since she now has the highest stack count. And we're going to move this up to a two times speed now. And we should just be able to detonate these as well. And boom. They are dead. Now there is the option as well to use Tiona's third over her second. So we'll see that in action now. We'll put it now, you've seen the fight, we'll put it up to a four times speed and we'll just blast through it. But this time we'll be using the fourth ability or the third ability over the second. Okay, so jumping into battle, we'll take it to a two times speed. We're gonna use Gatekeeper's AOE, get some nice little stacks building on the enemy. Siri's gonna chuck some extra stacks on herself just because she loves to. She loves to make it easy for us. Enchanting Flute from the Bliss. And then when it comes to our good friend, Tiona, we are going to use her third instead of her second and see what the results are. We actually do lose the gatekeeper there. Not a problem. Like I said, it's it's a hard tournament team because you are going to lose a lot of health or even characters. So we're going to use Squall Line this time. Boom. Now, it may not look as promising as the second ability, but I promise you the results are almost the same. We use the second there and we eliminate so many characters. We eliminate the... Impus there, and we're just going to go ahead and now attack the Sekamon until he is gone. Shouldn't take too long. We'll get some extra stacks on him, and the results are again. We lost the Gatekeeper there, but that was unavoidable. As you can see, that happened well before we even used Tiona, so that was going to happen whether we used her second or her third ability. As you can see, though, end result is the same. So now we are going to tighten the restrictions now. We are going to keep the enemy the same at the awakenings, everything awakened on the enemy team. And we are going to start lowering ours. I will test this, but then I'll come back with the absolute lowest awakenings I can use on my team to get the same result. 
Jumping back into the fight, we have kept every awakening on the Guardians. So every single one of their abilities is awakened. They are as strong as they possibly can be at this point in time in the game. And we have removed a lot of ours. We have taken all the awakenings away from Bliss. We have taken all the awakenings away from Flame. And we have taken one of the awakenings away from Tiona. So we only have her second, third leadership and passive awaken. So we have gone from, we've dropped essentially two thirds of our awakenings on our team. So we're going to set, follow the same process. We follow with gatekeepers, AOE, we use enchanting flute. I'm going to use my method in this fight. The other method was Goldos from Koala Bandits. He suggested the third, but I do like the second better. So we are going to use Chain Reaction, get some nice stacks up there. And as you can see, I'm going to AOE here. And we have two characters left. We are going to go ahead and attack the Suri. It doesn't matter. The stacks jump to the Sekman, who we are then going to go ahead and just use our basic on and trigger those as well. Sekman and the invisible, the invisible character. We're going to detonate these. And we still win. As you can see, a lot more dangerous, but we still get the win as well. So in this situation, what you're going to have to pay attention to is the gear level of the opponent versus the gear level of you. That is something I cannot control. I can only show you what the results are, but gear is always going to change drastically on the opponent you're versing. So just keep that in mind. But yeah, we took two thirds of our awakenings away and we still won. It was... A good win it was a bit more risky but we still got there so final battle we will chuck the succubus in in place of the bliss and we'll see how the fight plays out now for this one i will chuck the awakenings back on the flame and yeah we'll just have a maxed out versus maxed out fight back in the arena we have the succubus on the team now now i do believe these characters still win we will find out soon enough though it's quite hard to to beat the static charges yeah there you go so the result is still the same quite safe as well doesn't seem to be any issues though mind you we are completely awakened here as well well there's only flame and tiona on the team that is awakened but the results are pretty much the same but there is the option to use bliss in this team as well if you're after those tournament points so keep that in mind it's another way to use the team. So there you go. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. I will answer it to the best of my ability. And wherever you are in the world, until next time, please take care of yourself.